Hi, I'm Ethan. And I'm Georgia. And yeah, we're related. Well, we watched the idea of you, so you didn't have to. So obviously, that's what we're going to be talking about, the idea of you. The speculation, it could be a fan fiction on Harry Styles. No. Well, not that certain. I couldn't be. The author isn't that certain either. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> Anne Hathaway also is in this, and so you might have seen that this is simply everywhere. Her and her co-star, inescapable. Yeah, this movie is everywhere. So today, we're going to you know, catch you guys up speed. We've seen it, so you don't have to. You know, Georgia says it's a good idea to say the title of the movie in the video, so we just said it twice, you know, hopefully this does well. We're gonna give you guys the recap, because we know. So we're gonna recap you guys on the We've plot, seen it. And then we're gonna- If that's not clear. <laughs> We've seen the film that we're about to Because <laughs> we wanted to see it so you guys wouldn't have to. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we're gonna join the conversation. What are people saying about it? What do we think about it? What people are saying about it? You know, have a little yap sesh. Oh, I love to yap. So let's get into the plot. Selene, played by Anne Hathaway, and we probably pulled the rest of the video to just refer to her as Anne or Anne Hathaway, and we are first name basis. So she is a 40 year old divorced mother of a 16 year old daughter. She owns an art gallery. We find out that, you know, her and her husband separated because she finds out the husband's having an affair. She's willing to work on it. He leaves her for the affair partner. Rude. Honestly. I imagine Anne wanting to work on the marriage with you. Uh, what is that? It's like you wait till they find out. And they're like, I want to work on you. Like, no, I'm like, just leave them before that. <laughs> Gina, <laughs> Gina, Gina, if you're in the comments, let's know. Let us do your logic. Huh. And you know, early on in the movie, she starts coping about how she's cool to be alone forever. And it's obvious that it's coped to the audience and to her. So Anne takes her daughter and her friends to Coachella. They have VIP tickets meet and greet for the boy band August Moon. One Direction. And you know, at this VIP Maybe One Direction. <laughs> at this VIP meet and greet. Cannot confirm One Direction. <laughs> Anne meets Hayes Campbell. Hayes Campbell. Not Harry Styles, Hayes Campbell. And you know, we start to see a bit of chemistry. It starts here. with a H. <laughs> That's true. A H A. She was British, not doing the most there. She's British. He's British. Is he supposed to be British? Yeah, you know, sparks fly off their mate, you know, it's nice little meeting. Um and he in during that set he dedicates a song to her. She's quite moved by that. As you probably would be. Like Harry Styles dedicates a song to me. Nah, I'm, I'm probably gonna blank him later. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, whatever, she's back in an art gallery. Guess who decides to stop by? Hayes Campbell, remembered his name. And, you know, he buys all. Harry Styles. He buys the whole gallery, which I, I know we're just doing the pot recap, but I, I wanna say quickly, she gets annoyed about this. Like, you know, these are serious artists, blah, 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 blah. Like, what? She's trying to interrupt the sale. The artists will just want the sale. Anyway, that's a quick aside. From here, the romance blossoms and he invites her on the European leg of his world tour. She goes. You know, we get this nice little vignette of these romantic moments of them until. Oh, love that. Disaster strikes. You know, they're chilling out with one of the other band members and he kind of reveals that the dedicating a song is kind of their move to pull chicks. Men be playing. Yeah, so, and you did know. You, women, did you know that men play games? She gets pissed off. You know, she's, she also has a moment, she's like, because I forgot to mention, he's 24, I think, in the movie. <laughs> There's that age gap, she, you know, this happens and she's like, fuck this, what am I even doing? Like, I'm 40, he's 20 something. She fucks this, leaves him, goes back to LA. While it's been going on, her daughter's been at a uh, summer camp and she's just been lying to her daughter, being like, no, nah, you know, everything's cool. I hasn't mentioned anything about Europe, anything about Harry. She's just at home. She's a mom. Exactly. And moms don't have fun. Moms don't fuck boy bands. They do not. Mum, don't. I don't know how Jack would take it. <laughs> I don't know if he'd want to work on the marriage. <laughs> anyway, so she gets back and, you know, they saw a photo of them together gets leaked and their relationship kind of becomes headline news. Everybody's talking about lots of negative press around her. You know, all these negative articles about her. She goes... Being about mum. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Mums that have sex, bad. And she goes to pick her daughter up at the camp. The daughter is pissed, but just because she lied to her. Because she's a supportive daughter. Yeah, they are. They have a close relationship. Ultimately, the daughter just wants her to be happy. So she's like, what am I doing? This is stupid. Gets back together with Harry. The, you know, their lifestyle drastically changes. Now they've got an open public relationship. There's reporters always at the house taking photos of the daughter, all this stuff. The daughter starts to get bullying, bullied at school. I just can't imagine bullies being like, yeah, I'm going to bully you even though you have access to Harry Styles. I like, know. Like, what are you thinking? Let's insert clip of said bullying here because like, we were like, is that even fucking bullying? Like, they're barely saying anything. You would not exist at an Aussie public school, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's bullying. Just some seniors. 
asking if you could get a picture of Hayes' penis for them. But anyway, so because of this, you know, it's too much for the daughter. Fair enough, that is too much for a 16-year-old. Anne Hathaway ends things, you know, because of the daughter, putting the daughter first. Good mum move, against all the press. Uh, and, you know, they have a nice kind of last kiss together and they kind of leave the door open for when the daughter's older and in college, like maybe in five years. Maybe we can get back together. And how does the movie end? A knock on the door, boom, five years later, that's Harry at the door. And I will know for the listeners, for the watchers, that that's not how the book ends. That was a creative, um, a creative shift. How the book ends is that she always regrets never fulfilling her love with him and ending it prematurely. Actually made a little mistake. She, he visits her at the art gallery, not at her front door. Fuck! You're fine. <laughs> So that's the plot recap. You're up to date. George's up to date because she didn't really watch it. So, you know, the first thing we want to talk about is the quality of the movie and the fan fiction. First off, this movie goes for way too long. We watched it with another person and we both, me and the other person, like this movie sucks like the first hour, but it really kind of picks up the pace in the second half. But the movie goes for two hours, and like I know that that plot summary probably felt like it went forever too. But two hours, this should have been one and a half hour movie, which is what Georgia said it was. She was like, "Do you want to watch this movie with me? It goes for one and a half hours and has Anne Hathaway in it." I'm like, "Sign me up!" And then there's like an hour in, not much has happened. I was like, "There's no way there's half an hour left. Move the mouse, you fucking dog!" <laughs> On a school night, no less. Literally, I had to go to bed late. Do not mess with the gym bros routine, I've learned that. But yeah, this movie arguably went for too long. But like the chemistry between these two actors is really good. There's like a lot of fanfare for like Anne, but also for Nicholas. And he's like very much deemed a kind of up and coming star right now. He was in a horrific film, Purple Hearts. But then he was also- He's two for two, yeah. <laughs> and so he's like definitely a rising star. And you can see why, despite with some trepidatious scripts that was just listed one being like so pro-military i have no idea how it was made other than the military and he is still managing to have so much charisma on screen and continuing to get them and continue yeah. to get big roles and it's like to have chemistry with anne hathaway i mean come on dream come true like anne hathaway and nicholas they kill it and it really does seem like the whole budget to the movie went to them. They obviously didn't hire writers, just went to ChatGPT. <laughs> and like they put the book into ChatGPT yeah. and they said, make me a script. Yeah. And then there's also, you know, there's no actual licensed music in this movie. It's all fucking like sounds like royalty free music and it's just like pretty painful. It really takes you out of the experience. There's like an exception of like one Maggie Rogers song in the beginning, and I'm like, oh my god, and then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like crazy. Like, wait, one song with lyrics across a whole like romance film and about a music. Boy band. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, come on, we maybe should have put a little bit of money over there. Yeah, and like, oh, and the side, you know, there's no shade to the the supporting cast, but they are not nearly as good as Nicholas. There's and, some and, shade. <laughs> well, they we are shocking. We couldn't do a better job. <laughs> Who's sick? Yeah, put me in. Hey guys, like, I don't think that's a good idea. You guys are way too different of an age. What? Oh, Just, it. what are you thinking? No, he does this with all the girls. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, any talent scouts are out there. I am available, but I work a 9 to 5, so we'll have to work around that. But yeah, I feel like the, all the budget definitely went to them, and particularly yeah, the actors, when they're on screen, are, like, really take away. Like, everyone in this is, like, quite bad, like, other than them. But... We're gonna talk a little bit now about fan fiction. I feel like this film is like blowing up everywhere. Everyone is loving it. It's being really positively reviewed, but then obviously there were always some haters and people are like, oh, like this is fan fiction. And then saying that as if it's like a bad thing, but like historically, like if we look at like other fan fiction, such as Fifty Shades of Grey, it's like that performed blockbusters in the cinema. Blockbusters, people. <laughs> It was a blockbuster film, had what, three movies and like sold astronomically, it flew off shelves, very popular, famously like based off a Twilight fan fiction. It's like people like this kind of writing, people like these kind of storylines. It's like, why is it considered like such a bad thing? And I feel like it's obviously something that's targeted at similar age demographics, like old women have been being talked about a lot as the key demographic for this film. And older women also were made fun of heavily for reading Fifty Shades of Grey. It's like my mum reading Fifty Shades of Grey on the bus, like so embarrassing. And it says a lot about what we think about older women's like drive and like sexuality. It's like, um, you're not dead because you're past 40. Yeah. 
And you know, something to note here is that like, I, I, I'm all for the old, I didn't like this fucking movie. Um, but I'm all, I'm in all, case you didn't know, you like this I'm, movie. Well, I did love Anne Hathaway in it. But the thing is, it's like, we, I totally agree, you know, there's nothing wrong with fan fiction, but can we just like write them better? Because there is so much bad, like this movie has so many horrible lines. Like one in particular I remember is, remember at like the 40th, 40th birthday and they're like, they're doing like dinner table talk. It's like, who the fuck <laughs> talks like this? You're out the type of person you want to be. That is profound. That is drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Like, it honestly felt like the script was AI generated. I'm <laughs> it was not like kidding. AI dinner party. These are better smutty fan fictions in general. Don't we? <laughs> don't, don't we all? Well, I think it's like a, a good point, like, with what we were talking about earlier, is that, like, I feel like a lot of men are very anti, like, these fan fiction adaptations, because they're like, it's so unrealistic. Like, people will be like, oh, the only good thing about this movie is, like, Anne Hathaway and Nicholas's like chemistry because this plot line is so unbelievable. It's like, uh, like there's a whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, yeah. I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, well, and that's I completely just... different, George. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, we do can not all... bring up the MCU. Or I'm gonna that'll <laughs> snap you out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how we would feel in a boardroom. And like fantasy novels in particular, yeah. I think it's a good equivalency. It's like, yeah, like smutty, like these crazy storylines that are like in fantasy, like 40 year old mom, like gets on world tour. It's like, um, this guy just like got a sword and conquered the world. Like, I agree, like I, it's not an absurd storyline. Like, it, well, this could happen. This does happen. Harry loves a fucking old woman. It's like, is this based on Harry Styles' life? Yes, no, author has much to say about that. But there are some stark similarities in terms of this age gap relationship which we touched on just before, but there's a couple decade age gap here. And Harry Styles famously dated Olivia Wilde. And he also dated Taylor Swift when he was like 19 and she was like 22. And the Love Island host. Isn't it Caroline something? Caroline Flack. Harry Styles is quite the timeline of dating older women. And so, I don't know, conveniently a boy band formed who's British with the name H.A. dates older women. I'm like, she's got to get this inspiration from somewhere. Yeah, and well, she had initially she stated that Harry Styles was an inspiration for the book, but I think now that it's like completely blown up, she's like backpedaling it a bit and like, no, like, and there's like a fury. I saw one article said she's furious with fans for thinking it's about Harry Styles. Like, bro, you said it was. <laughs> exactly, and I think. I think the reason actually why she has maybe switched so much is like profiting massively off a relationship that is like considered somewhat problematic. Also, they met on set when she was a director and he was, she was the director and he was a star in the Olivia Wilde relationship. And that seems like one of like the biggest like draws well, here. I think like, let alone like the problematics of an age gap or whatever, it's probably just wrong to be profiting off what is kind of like a real story of somebody else who you probably don't have permission to use, like use his likeness, even though, you know, whatever it's not, but it obviously is. I think particularly that's really good in terms of like, when we do think about defamation, like in terms of profiteering off likeness, it doesn't need to be an exact replica, but this is so clear to everyone who has read or watched this film or seen anything on it, that it is based on Harry Styles. And there's a particularly good scene with the daughter, which makes you like cringe so hard the daughter where she's driving in the car early on to go to uh, Coachella to see, to see all these other cool new artists that she wants to see. She like doesn't even want to go see Harry Styles, just to dab one of VIP things. And then the radio comes on and the, anyway, the teens are like all singing in the back and she's like, no, that is so seventh grade. And that is so me coded because I, very embarrassingly, had tickets to go to One Direction on their like lot, which would have been their last tour, like in Australia. Could have seen, could have been part of history. Of history, really. And I decided that I was too cool because when I put, purchased the tickets, it was two years before they came to Australia. And then me and my friends kind of got together and we were like, should we sell the tickets? Like, nah, like they're still cool. Nah, like they're not cool. And we're like, I don't know if we can like come back to school like on Monday, like having people knowing that we went to the One Direction tour. Like that was, that was in the conversation. I, I know, was and it's like, dude, you were already a loser in high school. It didn't matter, just go have fun. <laughs> Bro, they don't even know that. <laughs> they knew. <laughs> they knew. Yeah. Throw up a picture of Georgia on screen in high school. <laughs> like, yeah, they knew.
Yeah, so anyway, I sold my tickets, which is embarrassing. Um, and I didn't get to go. And watching this scene was criminal for me. Like, watching this girl, like, think that she was really edgy and cool. Because that's definitely what I thought I was. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm really edgy and cool. Because, like, two years later, I don't even want to go. Meanwhile, I'm screaming what makes you beautiful on my car yeah. on the drive home. Chat GPT nailed this part of the script. That's a realistic moment. <laughs> Seriously. That's kind of scary. Like, if this thing becomes sentient. <laughs> I think that the movie is a bit miscast here because Anne Hathaway is 40 and the lead boy, I don't, I'm unaware of his name. Nicholas. Nicholas is 29 or no. 29, yeah. Yeah, 29. And so it's only, and I think that's an appropriate age gap. You know, it's like a 30 year old guy and a 40 year old woman where they're playing a 22 year old guy and a 40 year old woman, which in my opinion is more of an inappropriate age gap. They have way different life stages, but 30 and 40 are like really not that different, especially for like, you know, two actors. Yeah. Like it's not very well cast in, in the age, like... In the age gap. It makes the age gap, like, not take, bad. Yeah, take less of a front, which is obviously, okay, maybe it's good casting, so you're not focusing as much on the age gap. Yeah. Something to be noted, I think, about this is everybody's talking about how, one, how amazing Anne, Anne Hathaway is looking at 40, and just how, like, she's back on the scene at 40, and it's like, especially the beauty thing, people saying, like, oh my God, she looks amazing at 40. It's like, 40 is not that old, and it's like, if she was... You know, beautiful at 20, she's probably going to be beautiful at 40. Like, and it's honestly insane the amount of people who are acting like 40 is ancient. And nobody says it, you know, about male leads. It's like, Brad Pitt is what, like at 50? And nobody's ever like, oh my God, he's still hot at 50. It's just 50? Brad Pitt's hot. Try 63. Okay. And it's just, you know, Brad Pitt's hot. Brad Pitt's hot and bullet train. Like, a huge other blockbuster yeah, round. It's it, like, what? It's not hot at 63, but Anne Hathaway, it's, she's hot at 40. It's like, yeah, bro, she's hot. She's always been hot. Grow up. Yeah. Hot people exist over 40. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think um, we'll, we'll throw up some, some headlines here. It's really like it's capturing lots of headlines. But also the way that people are talking about mums, it's really like, oh, like Anne Hathaway has perfectly captured the cool mum. It's like, what? Like, okay, so if you have a kid, you're not cool. But it's like really like, it's. I think it reflects a lot about how we think about like mums. It's like, if you're a mum, like you're inherently uncool because you have kids. It's like, oh, sorry, I brought something into this world like yeah. what do you mean it's a beautiful thing <laughs> seriously the miracle of life come on but it is like massive and it's definitely gendered in the way that we like don't see it. like with dads it's not like we're surprised that there's cool dads it's like that kind of standard is cool dad and then it's like whoa oh my god like a cool mom pretty much everyone's commenting yeah. on it like, I, I do want to say as well it's like it is kind of refreshing for all because, like, there isn't really that many romantic leads where somebody is 40. And then the other another movie that we both love, The Lost City, Sandra Bullock is 60, I think. 62. 62. But Maybe when the movie films. came out, it was 60 and they're romantic leads. So it is a bit refreshing that now we're kind of starting to see older women in romantic leads. But, the, the yeah, the conversation around how she's still beautiful from all the fucking online incels is insane. It's like, yeah, dude. If somebody's a smoke show, let's be honest... <laughs> I've obviously got a crush on Anne Hathaway if you're not getting that out. And if Anne sees this. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, if you're hot at 20, you're going to be hot at 40 if you take care of yourself. And you've got Hollywood money, you're going to be taking care of yourself. Correct. Simple. Simple. So, to conclude the discourse, women can age and they can still be beautiful. Crazy. And women can like things and also be in things. And so, you know, my final kind of thoughts on the movie is I really did like Anne Hathaway in it and Nicholas. Great chemistry on them. But it's way too long. The writing is awful. I didn't like it. So, you know, take that. But, Hath you know, it's like, oh, it's good to see Anne Hathaway in something. So maybe I kind of did. But I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I can attest to watching it with you. You did not enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't like it. But I can say firmly that I did really enjoy it. And as somebody who, like, grew up listening to One Direction and then pretending to not like them while secretly liking them, this is, like, such a good movie. It's, like, a fun piece of escapism. I really liked it. Watching it, and I really liked forcing Ethan to watch it. I loved it too. <laughs> and with that, there's really only one thing left to do. I'm gonna go put dinner on. I'll see you next week. Get that man in the kitchen. Oh! oh! You thought we were done? I reckon I lost. There we go.